Peter, um, so, I mean, look at these yields. It, it's it's got to have an impact on the equities market, right? Well, you'd think from a multiple perspective, for sure, uh, going into this recent rate move, the S&P 500 on a trailing basis got up to almost 25, 26 times earnings and forward about 21. That's rather rich for the rise in interest rates. And its economic impact, its earnings impact, depends on what side of the fence you're on. Are you a borrower? Do you need to refi? Are you going to look to buy a house? Are you trying to finance a factory? Or on the other side, are you collecting nice interest income as a saver? Are you a boomer that wants to go on cruises? Well, you seem to be doing just fine. Yeah. I mean, Polonius' advice, neither a borrower or, nor a lender be. Uh, the lender part's looking pretty good right now. Jeff, what, what moves are you making in this environment, given uh, not only do rates not seem to be coming down anytime soon, but yields, yields getting a little spike? So, you know, we're still in, John, kind of hold your ground mode. And there's no specific theme that we see out there. What we do like is, uh, you know, having active strategies that we manage. There really is correlations that are coming down. And you can even see that within the Magnificent Seven. They're, they're moving in disparate um, kind of patterns. And that says that there's opportunity. And it's really based upon the fundamentals, the valuation and technical uh, elements of these stocks. So we're maintaining a, a blend between growth and value. We find plenty of attractive opportunities within technology outside of the Magnificent Seven. And we really like within capital spending, the industrials look good as we re-onshore. The economy is holding up nicely. There's still opportunities within consumer. And, uh, you know, we're, we're poised and, and measured in our view. We had a target of 5,200 to 5,400 on the S&P. And we're kind of maintaining that. And it's hold your ground and look at those stocks that aren't priced at 30 times, uh, unless they have 30% growth rates. And, um, you know, kind of enjoy the, the attractive fundamentals out there. Okay, so Peter, getting specific, you do remain bullish. Gold and silver uh, and other commodity stocks, energy, industrial metals, uranium, agriculture. Why that specifically? And is there a danger in not believing in some of this technology stuff, right? The, the AI story that, yes, some stocks are, are pretty rich in their valuation, but isn't the story just starting to unfold? No question. And it's going to be very exciting to see how companies use the technology as tools in terms of improving their productivity and improving their businesses and so on. Right now, we're sort of in the picks and shovels development phase. Let's see how when what the returns of investment are for the users of that. On the commodity side, well, the CRB index, and this ties into interest rates, this complicates the Fed's job. The CRB index yesterday closed at the highest level since August 2022. And I think that that commodity bull run still has a ways to go. And as you said, I've been very bullish on precious metals. That's finally getting a lift. I think silver is one of the more exciting things to own. Uh, agriculture has lagged, but it's beginning to play catch up in terms of like the fertilizer stocks. But quietly, we know cocoa has ripped to the upside. Coffee all of a sudden is at a multi-year high. And the industrial metals just getting a lift from uh, the whole EV excitement. But generally speaking, with all the money that's been invested in tech over the past five to 10 years, it was not invested in commodity production. Hmm. So this is sort of a payback of all the lack of investment in that area to the benefit of technology. And now you have this supply demand imbalance that's leading to higher commodity prices. Jeff, we